Everything that we do and make on the internet has the same ultimate goal, to get people to take action. Now that may take the form of getting someone to sign up for your newsletter. That may mean you want them to buy something. Whatever it is, you need to help them to achieve this goal by giving them a strong call to action. Today I want to discuss an idea I had. Now I'm certain I'm not the first one who ever thought of this, but since implementing it on my own website, I've seen really good results. Let me show you what I mean. Sometimes you go to a website and you get hit in the face with a, with a pop-up, a prompt, the sign-up, or a big advertisement right away. Now how effective is that? Do you ever click on these? If you're anything like me, you tend to hit the close button and run. So what I've done on my own site is to let users browse around a bit, get to know me and what I'm about, and then give them the fast pitch. So the use case is this. Step one, they come to my homepage. Step two, they navigate to an internal page and they see what's going on in there. Eventually they're gonna navigate back to the homepage for step three when I introduce a modal to them that prompts them to sign up for the newsletter. Pretty simple, right? The hope is now that they've taken some time and gotten to know my brand, and I've given them value by letting them read a nice article or something. I can then prompt them to perform the action, the reason that I built the website in the first place. Now this is not the ultimate solution and it's not gonna change your life, but it will give your users a better experience and enable them to be more willing to engage with your brand. To achieve this feature, I use JavaScript to put a cookie in their browser at each step of the use case that I outlined earlier. And I update this cookie continually until they reach step three when they either sign up or close that modal. I then complete the cookie and they never have to see that modal again. Let me show you how it's done. Okay, I made this really fake uh, banjo website here that's trying to you know, sell you a revolutionary banjo. And um, I have two pages here. This is the index page, and if you click this learn more button, you're gonna get to uh, an article page. Basically, it's not the home page. And I have uh, on the uh, index page, the body has a class of home, and that's kind of important. That'll come into, that'll come into play a little later. The, in, the uh, page page, what is this called? The inner page, right? Oh, actually, it has a class of inner page. This one does not have a, class of home and that's the important thing about it. So if you go back to the home page by clicking the logo of the banjo store, we're going to get back to the home page and um, what else? Oh yes, we have a, a modal on this page that's currently hidden. Let me see. Down here uh, we have a sign up modal and it, if I add the class is open, then it will add, there we go, it'll add this sign up uh, modal here which has an email sign up form so you can prompt uh, your uh, viewers to learn more about your company or maybe this is to buy your book or to buy a banjo in this case or uh, you know whatever it is uh, this is like a more uh, heavy-handed way of getting prompting them to complete whatever action or maybe it's to remind them to do something before they leave or sign out or something like that but anyway uh, we have this little modal that will show up if the class is open, is on it. If it's not, then uh, it won't show up, right? It'll just be a regular, normal web page. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a cookie to um, check if they're on this page and if they've been to any other pages, and if they're back on this page, then pop that modal. And here's how we do that. We're going to go to um, this uh, plugin of jQuery called jQuery Cookie. And uh, it's, it's really easy. Um, I just downloaded this script here. Actually, I just co copied and pasted it. Let me show you my uh, directory tree. Into a file that's in my uh, JS folder called jQuery cookie. And I just copied and pasted it. Actually, if you pay attention to the documentation here, uh, it explains that the master branch is not the most update. So you might want to view the documentation for the latest branch of 1.41. That's the one that I grabbed. So make a note of that. Um, and then the usage instructions are, it's really quite straightforward. The, this plugin does the heavy lifting for us. So um, all I need for my demonstration here is uh, my markup, in which case I've uh, included jQuery, uh, and then I've included this cookie, and then I have also a script 
Um, it's my functions. It's just like, you know, this, this empty uh, JavaScript file, which I'm going to be writing in tonight. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, uh, let me just map out. When I, when I write JavaScript, I like to map out the logic or at least the steps that, that, that the JavaScript needs to walk through in order to accomplish my goal. So uh, let's just do a quick, a quick walkthrough. The first thing I want the user to do is um, visit home. The second thing is a visit inner page. And then the third thing is when they, and they can um, visit many pages. It doesn't matter how many. Or even they can go log out or go home or go to another website. But when they come back to home, visit home again, um, uh, modal. That's what I want to happen. So in order to do that, I have to uh, set up a cookie, right? So to create a cookie session, it's just like this. You're going to create, uh, you're going to say dot cookie, and then in quotes, the cookie, comma, and then the value of the cookie. So a cookie is a, a key and value pair. So we're going to name what the cookie is, and then the, you know, like, like, these are socks, and I have three socks, kind of like that. Three socks. Who has three socks? Anyway, um... So I'll say uh, dollar dot cookie paren, um, and I'll I'll call this cookie seen because I'm tracking which pages they've seen, and I'm going to give it a value of uh, step one, right? Because it, as soon as they visit the home page, and that's what we're kind of focusing on here, we're going to name that cookie step one. They've they've done step one, and I want to use this expires as well and the path so what expires does is it says how long is this cookie going to sit around for and this is in days and then the path says um, make it uh, valid you know in a subdirectory or across the entire site so if i add this it's going to last for seven days across the entire site and so i want to do that too i need a comma right after step one though all right and i don't want it to last for seven days i want it to last for a bit longer than that like a few months 120 days across the whole entire site. That looks like a good cookie. Tasty, tasty cookie. All right, so they come to our home page and they uh, get marked by the scene uh, cookie as step one. Now we want to put that into a conditional statement and we want to give this cookie to them only if they're on the home page, right? So I'll say if, um, if the, uh, um, uh, if the body of the HTML document has a class of home, then do this. Give them that cookie. But what happens if you come to the home and it's the second time you come to the home? You don't want it to be reverted back to step one. So we'll say if the class, if the body has a class of home and the cookie of uh, scene, right? That's our name of our cookie. Uh, basically, does not exist. So we'll say a bang right in front of it. So that'll say not cookie scene. So it doesn't have no cookie on it so far. And the body has a class of home. Only two ands. And the cookie's not seen. Console log here. And inside that console log, we'll, uh, we'll ask for the cookie and print out what the cookie is. All right. Let's go to our console and take a look. All right. Well, uh, the thing about cookies, right, is that you have to kind of, <laughs> if you're going to be working with cookies, it's best to use an incognito browser um, because each time you go to it, it's going to, Uh, it's going to accept your cookie, and maybe you guys know a better way around this, but I haven't found it. Okay, so let's see what we got. Okay, so um, what happened now was, just as a review, it said if we go to a home page and the body has a class of home and there's no cookie, then take a cookie called scene and label it as step one. And then in the console, 
uh, take uh, write out what the cookie of scene is. And we have a console log of step one right here. So this was successful in the, the body. Okay, so if they visit home, do that. That's good, that's what we wanted. Now let's say if they visit the inner pages, we wanna take that cookie and uh, replace the, the string step one with step two because they've completed the first step, which is visit the home page, and now they're on the step. Uh, the second step, which is visit the inner page, I wanna label it as step two. And again, I'll expire it later on. I'm gonna use the same console message here to check our work. But I wanna put this, uh, this cookie statement again in a conditional. And we'll say if, If what? We want to say if the cookie has step one, right? If it has no cookie or some other cookie for scene, we don't want this to work. So we want to say if uh, the dollar cookie, dollar dot cookie, there we go, scene is equal to the string of step one. And, you know, we're concerned with where in the website they are. We don't want them to be on the home page. So we want to go over here to have body home, the way that we looked at the body to see if it was the body. And we want to make sure that it's just put a bang in front of it so it's not the body, okay? So let me read this to you again. If you go to this page and the cookie of scene has step one and the page and the body of this page does not have a class of home, then do the following. Take that cookie and replace step one with step two and expire it in 120 days. And then we can log uh, the cookie to make sure we're on step two. So let's save that. Okay, it's saved. And we're gonna go to page two and check out our console down here below. Page two, step two, perfect. So now we've logged that we're in step two. Now we wanna say what's gonna happen if they come home. And we'll start with the if statement this time. If, um, similar to the first uh, beginning here, if dollar dot cookie scene is equal to, at this point, it should be step two, right? Because they've gone to the second page and they're coming back. If it's step two and we're now on the home page. So it's gonna be what we had, yeah. And the body has a class of home page. Then we'll do the following. We're gonna find the um, element that has a class of sign up modal, and we're gonna add the class, not ask the class, add the class of um, is open. That will basically pop that modal. And then uh, just for good measure, we can check our cookie again. But it, but we're not reass we've not reassigned the cookie name, right? So after we check this cookie, it should still say step two. Let's save. And then we're going to go back to that home page right now. And it should pop a modal. And in our um, console log, it should say Step two, well, let's take a look. Pop the modal and step two. Brilliant, that's exactly what we wanted to happen. I really like this. Um, now the third thing we wanna do is concern ourselves with um, closing the modal. Okay, so now the modal's open and they either submit or they uh, click this button and this is uh, in our markup. Uh, this is called uh, it's a class of close, right? A little X right there. Okay, so let's say uh, in the, let's say the sign up modal dot close. If they click it, uh, this will happen. These functions 
we'll go down. Uh, the first thing we want to do is just close that modal. So it's going to be the reverse of this statement here. And uh, we'll say instead of add class, we're going to be just saying remove the class. And then what we want to do is take that cookie. Where are you, cookie? Right here. And take it away from step two. Let's rename it from step two to something a little bit more definitive, like complete. And what that does is it lets us know, I mean, it assigns the cookie as complete. It doesn't remove the cookie. And why that's important is because if that cookie was removed, the next time they come to the home page, we'll just start this all over again, right? Cookie is, no, there's no cookie you've seen. So this leaves the cookie there as complete. And if it is a if there is a cookie of scene defined when they come to the home page later on, it won't start the whole process over again. So uh, let's save that there. Okay, we've got the modal, we've got step two. We're gonna close the modal, and it should first of all remove. And then the second thing is we should see a console log here. Oh no, we need to get our console log. Okay, now we have a console log statement. All right, we're going to close this modal, and it should disappear. And then in the console, we should see um, the word complete being replacing uh, step two, right? There we are, complete. Good. So uh, let's check that again. We'll open an incognito window, and I'm going to paste in the homepage URL. Let's open our console here so we can check our statements. So we've arrived on the home page. We're in step one. Click Learn More. We're at step two in this article page. This is any page that's not the home page, or at least any page that whose body does not have a class of home. Return to the uh, home page. Pop to modal. We can fill this out and click Submit or um, click the X. And then we have a complete down here. And that's exactly what we wanted. You can use this technique in a million different ways to achieve a million different goals. You should use this tutorial as a launching off place to help your viewers enjoy your unique value to its fullest. And now for the Dev Tips question of the week, what interesting UX ideas do you have to increase conversion goals? What has worked for you lately? This is the first ever video fully supported by the Dev Tips Patreon community. And I really want to thank the people who have generously pledged at patreon.com slash devtips. At the time of this recording, there are 41 people who are generously supporting the show. You can thank them in the comments below. You can find the files I used to create this video over on github.com for free. The link is in the description below. If this is the first time you've ever watched a Dev Tips video, I sincerely hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, please consider subscribing. There's a new video every Monday. Until I see you next week, keep on hacking. And if you like this instruction, be sure to click that button. And if you like this instruction, be sure to click that button.